Praise the Lord, saints. Tonight, I'll be bringing forth the message. And our message will be coming from Romans chapter 2. And the title will be, And Be Not Conformed to This World. But before we get started, let us have a word of prayer. Dear Gracious Father, as we look into your face this night, Lord, we ask for your wisdom. Help us, O oh, gracious Lord, to speak with boldness. Help me, gracious Father, to speak with clarity, Lord. And Lord, above all, uh, that which I say, Lord, you please give understanding as we go forth today that you may get the praise and honor. We thank you for what you will do in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, with saints, if you will turn with me, please, to Roman chapter 12, and let me read verse 1 and 2 because I think these two verses go together. And if we have it, it reads, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. Verse two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Tonight, I would like to spend just a little time talking about two events. First, I want to talk about the world. Secondly, I want to talk about the believer. And then thirdly, I would like to try to comment on the answer to the believer in this time and age in which we're living in. Amen? Okay. First of all, uh, subject saying and be not conformed to this world and I want to look at the world for just a few minutes now saints I'm asking you to fill in between us and the Lord because I'm going to try to stick to probably one subject and one uh, issue and, and I know pretty much that you all can understand where I'm coming from and you can understand what the world looking like to you okay so first of all, let's look at the world. As we live in today, in these times, we see that the world is in turmoil. The world is constant. We look around at our leaders. Our leaders are arguing one with another. No one can come to a conclusion on what to do. Uh, they align one another on one another. Our government is in the same thing. One candidate running for one office, speaking lies against the other one. And so much so that even I, I want to look at um, the COVID. The, uh, it's, um, the virus going around. Look, look what that's going. One social or one party is saying that the virus is a hoax. Another one saying it's killing thousands and thousands of people. And don't take this and take this. And that. so much so that the people are totally confused. Saints, I can tell you right now. I can tell you right now that the world is lost. The Bible says that the world have no hope. They do not have any hope. And this is going to continue because I believe looking at man, man is trying to put himself in the place of God. And God is trying to wake him up and let him know that he is in charge and you can look around at the situation of the hurricanes and the tornadoes coming, the floods, the fires, and everything. The Lord is trying to get our attention. But we play it off as something else. But that's the world for you. They have no hope. But saints, I want to really look at this. We as Christians, we as believers, in this time and age, what are we looking at? And how are we preparing ourselves for this chaos in this world. And from just looking at it, I'll show you in a few minutes how all this tie in to be not conformed to the world. And we can see believers now, we'll take an instance like the COVID again, this situation. Look what it has done to the world. What it has done to the world is create a whole lot of problems. People are dying every day by the hundreds, they are dying all over the world, creating chaos. And because of it, look what it's done to the Christian. First of all, you look around, 
Our churches are closed. Most of the Christians are isolated to their homes because of they don't want to try to catch the virus or spread the virus. But just looking at this one issue that the churches are closed and we're living in these times right here and these times where the, I believe the Lord said we're in the last days. Therefore, as Christians, what we want to concentrate on being that we are no longer coming to church, we're not fellowship as actually seeing our fellow believers and getting encouragement from them, coming and seeing and hearing our pastor speak to us um, face to face. We leave, I believe, a, a time and place that Satan can get in between. Now understand what I'm trying to say. We're not fellowshipping again in the church body like we used to. Therefore, what are we substitute in that church time that we used to come to church? What are we doing? We are allowing other things to come up. Now, I'm not saying it's all bad now, but this I am saying that over time, Satan is steadily at work and he's very subtle. And as we relax because we're not coming to church and begin to watch, for example, TV, or may we take that time when he's coming to church and go play sports and stuff like that. Saints, we not um, reading our word. We're not praying. And let me ask you, are your prayers and your reading the word, are they effective as they used to be? I don't think so. I don't think so because we are allowing things to get between us and the Lord. And therefore, it's very dangerous because Satan can take it and multiply these things. He did Eve like that. When God told him of all the uh, trees and the fruits in the, in the garden, you can eat, but of this one, do not touch and eat. And then Satan asked the question, oh, surely he didn't mean that. Sure, oh, surely. He just mean that you become like him. And saints, that is what we have to be careful of in the last times we, in the last days, we have to be careful that we don't get caught up in there and let things get between us and the Lord. Now, keep in mind, the Lord never leave us nor forsaken. You can count on that. He's not like man to say one thing, do another thing. The Lord will never leave us. But if you find your prayer life and you're reading the word of God and it has no meaning after you read it, then you have to Check yourself out. You need to judge yourself because you are moving away from the Lord. And therefore, as you move away, you're not as affected as you used to be. But saints, that is a possibility in the last days when we have a and the Satan would use that, that we'll get like the world. And it's, it's possible for a Christian to pick up so many bad habits from the world, that they become like the world. Remember now, as Christians, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. We need to keep that in mind. But I believe if we look at chapter 1 of this ver uh, verse 1 of chapter 12 of Romans, we can see the answer that the Lord gives for this particular situation, that we find that we are not having that same passion and love that we used to have with the Christ when we first came to him. And therefore, we can see what he required that we do. Look at verse 1 of chapter 12. And it reads, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Let's stop right there. The Lord is saying what we need to do to get back in the right stand with him so that when we pray, we know our prayer is, is effective. We know that reading the word of God is very effective. We need to go back even before we do that. Start praying, Lord, forgive me. Even before that. Even before I start reading the word of God. What we need to do is what the Lord said we need to do first. And if you turn with me to Luke chapter 9. That's Luke chapter 9, and let's look at verse 23. That's the only verse we're going to go to. That's the only verse. I'm trying to keep this very simple, verse-wise. Verse, verse, -wise. verse 23 of Luke chapter 9, and it reads, And he said to them all, that's Jesus, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself 
take up his cross daily and follow me. And this is the key. Now, Jesus Christ was our sacrifice. And what the Lord is asking for, we need to deny ourselves. Because as we, as Christians, I'm speaking to Christians now, as we as Christians, we get, the, we get an opportunity to do good, and then the next few minutes we're fading away. But we are forgetting that one thing. The Lord said we need to crucify ourselves daily. Not once a week, a couple of weeks, but daily. And when by sacrificing ourselves and to the Lord, we are eliminating and letting things get between us and the Lord. And therefore, your relationship begins to mend. Therefore, when you start reading the word of God, you have meaning. Your prayer life will have meaning because we got back into focus and realized what Jesus did for us. Therefore, we, our frame of mind will be back. Lord, I need to be about your business. Lord, I need to get on down the road and start witnessing and start doing the things you asked me to do. I need to start showing love for one another. I need to help my enemies. Lord, yes, help your enemies. The Lord said, pray for them and do good for your enemies. And, and the Lord said that even we should do even better to the Christian. Those are the attitudes we have, but we won't get that. If we don't have sacrifice, pick up our cross daily and follow the Lord and put away all these other things getting between us and the Lord, saints, I'm telling you, we are living the last time, the last days, and we got to stay focused. It's not long now. We're hanging in there for the Lord. The Lord is soon returning, but we must, we must keep our eyes focused on the Lord. I think about Peter walking on the water. As long as he kept his eyes on the Lord, he was walking boldly on the water. But the moment he turned and looked away, he started sinking. We can't afford to do that. We didn't come too far now, saints. We need to continue to focus on the Lord. And therefore, as we said, we will not become like the world, but it's so easy to come. Go back to Romans chapter 12. And let me read one more time, verse 2. Now, we're looking for the truth in this time and age we're living in because we don't know what the truth is because there's so many lies and they lie on lie and they tell this story and tell this that we don't know the actual what is truth. But the Bible tells us Jesus is true. And you can rest assured when he tells you about the, the coming he tells you about everyday life. You can rest assured that is truth because the world don't know nothing about what's truth. They only know what they can get out of the world. Verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the only way we, and we can look at yourself now from the moment you at first accept the Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and life, you looked at life through a different view on um, point now. We can see, all Christians can look around them now, and we can see the world is, is in turmoil. We can see that because we have hope, and our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, saints, if you didn't understand, understand anything I just said, the way we truly can be can um, grow in the Lord and do what the Lord have us to do and not worry about being conformed to the world is by growth. As long as the individual, a Christian, I should say, is growing in the Lord, you have no time to let, in, let Satan come, in, come in into your life and destroy your life or tempt you in such a way that you fall away. That's a simple thing, to continue to learn, continue to grow in the Lord. Amen. Now, the rest I will talk about another time. Amen. So I thank you, saints, and I pray that you will hear what I said, but the Lord will give you understanding in the things I speak of. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you once again for your word given. I pray that your word will find a lot of place in those hearts that hear your word. And Lord, that it may increase their faith. And that they may hold on, Lord. They may uh, pick up their cross, Lord, daily and follow thee. 
Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' precious name, amen.